So my name is Rosto. I'm uh, from Amsterdam and I'm an artist and filmmaker and I am at the Animateka Festival for quite a few different reasons. Uh, first of all, I am responsible for the artwork of this year's poster and merchandise. Um, second of all, I'm here to present my program, Mind My Gap, So Far So Evil, which consists of a film retrospective as well as an exhibition in the Moderna Galleria uh, that covers basically the last 20 years of my work and how it all comes together, whatever the discipline uh, is. And the last reason why I'm here, maybe not the last one, almost last one, is that I'm in the uh, jury this year of the official competition. And uh, the last reason, the very last reason why I'm here is to enjoy myself. This is not my first time in Ljubljana, actually. In the 90s, I was here, I think in 1993, and I loved it so much, uh, I kind of fell in love with the city. So the next year, I actually came back here with the band, which has now become the Wreckers in my films. Back then, we were just the Wreckers, and we were young and wild people, and we actually played uh, acoustically in the streets. Of Ljubljana, so I have very fond memories of the of the city. Um, but this is my very first time on It was so real. It was just. Well, my main influence. Whenever I get the question like, "Who are my heroes?" or "Who is my main inspiration?" or whatever, I usually reply that it's me. You know, it's it's my intuition because I consider my intuition my unique artistic DNA. You know, it's this unique mix this unique cocktail of everything that I've experienced, you know, whether it's art, literature, but also, you know, my partners in life, you know, my parents, uh, the food that I've had. And since I am from the punk rock generation, what also is very important is all the stuff that I didn't like, all the things that I was actually against, you know, like Johnny Rotten says, anger is an energy. I also, you know, I'm very much from that, from that generation, proving something wrong. And all these things together, you know, in the different doses and the different percentages make a unique cocktail, which is your intuition. And this is what I use. You know, if you would see intuition as this soup with all these elements inside of all everything that you've experienced in your life. Every time when I do a project, I basically scoop from the soup. And sometimes you literally see chunks of it and you recognize it, you know, like, ah, this resembles, you know, Jodorowsky's Holy Mountain, or, you know, it resembles whatever. That's basically, I call those tributes, you know, it's not stealing, it's actually little tributes to my own personal and individual uh, unique um, intuition. You know, the thing is, you could watch films several times, of course, and I try to make films that you can watch many times and see different films every time. But the very first viewing, and I always consider, you know, an, an audience like here, many of them will see my films for the first time. And I still do ask from them, although I know that it's hardly possible, to watch, to, to experience these films as visual music. You know, just let it come in instead of, because people are very often put off or sort of sent off in the wrong directions, trying to decode it with the conventional keys because that won't work with my films, that will not work. Yes, of course, you can have interpretations and all these things, but that's also very possible to do that afterwards. This is what I enjoyed so much showing, for example, The Monster of Nyx to, to children. It's not that I want my viewers to be like children, that's not what I said. I really enjoyed how uh, honest and generous they were in the viewing experience, which is almost impossible to ask from an adult, but they really, let everything just come over them and they fully experience you know if something is scary they will really be scared instead of trying to uh, decode it in one way or another it's only afterwards that they start interpreting it you know you don't have to do this while watching while watching you should actually be feeling stuff experiencing things and afterwards kids also gave me the most interesting questions you know with adults uh, very often they they find their resort in safer questions, conventional questions, where with kids, for example, I can give you an example, Monster of Nyx, one of the questions that I got from one of the kids was actually, you know, those eggs, they contain stories, but how does that work? How do they come out? Or how, how, how? And then I explained to this kid, you know, like the Monster of Nyx, for example, is a story, it's a film, but if nobody watches, it doesn't exist. 
but as soon as you look at it, it suddenly exists. But every time when you watch the film, Willy is still going through the same adventure. This is also why the film has a loop uh, uh, structure, basically. It starts where, where it ends, because every time when you pick up the egg, every time when you look at this story, the, cre the, the character, the protagonist, is still going through the same thing over and over again. And that's more or less how the eggs work. And, you know, I would never get a question like this from an adult audience, and I've never had, but it was the kids that actually came up with these questions. Very philosophical, very deep, and very interesting. Not, not everybody laughs about this, you know. I find it self, myself, I find it quite witty. It's not ha-ha funny, but I consider my films witty. You know, there is always a certain a, a lightness or a certain irony to it all. But originally, what people consider the darkness is more why I, I am also very much inspired by early silent expressionist cinema. You know, what they did perfectly was to actually show that cinema is so powerful and so potent to actually go into the darker shadows and shine the light there. You know, this is actually literally what cinema does. It's a dark room and lights start to shine into areas that we, where we usually don't go, usually where cameras cannot go. You know, animation is per perfect for this, uh, especially, because it can actually go to places where cameras cannot go. And, um, and it's usually the darker stuff. You know, there's a reason why early silent cinema was very often about darker themes. It was very often about horror. You know, a lot of horror movies are from that age, but also expressionism, you know, bringing the inside out. And I find that fascinating. And unfortunately, it was disrupted, this development, you know, especially the German uh, development of cinema was disrupted for obvious reasons. And I, in a way, I consider myself a child of that tradition and then bringing it more to the, to the new age, basically. But I like to go into those demonic depths and explore what's going on there because these themes, you know, whether it's fear or uh, death or, or uh, uh, decay, you know, all, and violence also, you know, we have it all inside of us. You know, there is this dark energy in all of us. And I think art is a perfect platform to actually go into these danger zones. You know, art is a perfect stage to do dangerous things. And I think, you know, if there was more room for culture, if we all took care of culture a little bit more, instead of cutting all the budgets, actually sort of investing a little bit more in it, it might actually be that, I mean, it's, this sounds a little bit innocent and idealistic, but I think a lot of the anger and the dark stuff and uh, the, this, this negative energy could actually take place in art instead of on the streets. Make a wish. I mean, we need to meditate on these things. You know, in all the previous religions that we saw, there's always gods or demons or whatever representing this dark stuff. We need to embrace it or at least acknowledge it that it's there and meditate on it instead of you know denying it or ignoring it or or uh, uh, letting it go wild or rogue on on the streets you know and art has this place you know art could have this 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 place of where religion used to be um, in our culture even wider than than art so yeah that's 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 not the only reason why I do this of course but it is definitely me uh, going into my own darker demonic depths, which doesn't necessarily mean evil. You know, demonic is actually a Greek word, and it is about the deeper waters. It's only Christianity that made it into something bad, uh, but originally, you know, this was uh, something that existed in all of us. You know, what we later started to call our subconscious. That is, the Greek called it uh, the demonic depths. But it was just a dream!